Okay, from one really close friend to someone else who's, oh, this one's gonna be really hard. Okay. Deep breath. Come on, Matt, you can do it. Thanks. No, I can't, not just this one. It, so it the reason I know this wonderful person is because she's my sister. <laughs> not dying. So, I know you're not dying. Shut up, I'm introducing you. It's an emotional moment. We're trying to get them to give us their money. Shut up. So, a lot, oh, thanks, Beth. So, a lot of people, um, have asked me, you know, what, what made me want to be an actor at one point. And the reason why I became an actor was there were a bunch of different things that all kind of happened at the same time in my life. Number one, I watched my first episode of The Simpsons. Number two, I saw Ace Ventura, Pet Detective with Jim Carrey. And was like, you can do that and make money. And then I saw Phantom of the Opera, that kind of clinched it. But the thing that really made me realize that this is what I want to do was because when my parents would take us on trips, um, my sister and I would be in the backseat of our van, and we would create plays with our stuffed animals. Allison would come up with a story, and she would direct me, and I would do the voices for the animals, and we'd do the story together on road trips, and our parents would laugh their asses off the entire way, being like, our kids are fucking insane. Um, and because of that, we went to drama camp. She became, from a student at the drama camp to my drama camp counselor, and wound up becoming my very first acting teacher. She has constantly reminded me that I am talented and that I deserve to work and that I shouldn't give up. And when I faced my darkest hour two years ago, she was the one who pulled me up and she's the reason I'm here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, making her Toronto theatrical debut, <laughs> my sister, Allison Brown.
sister. Woo! <laughs> um, Matt told me just to go off the cuff and ad lib, but I don't do that. So I have no. Um, thank you guys so, so much for coming out. <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. I feel like 2019 ended and we all had, <sighs> and then 2020 started. Um, and what's really nice about tonight is that we all get to come together as a community and both like grieve what's happened in Australia, but also celebrate all the good things that that has brought um, out of our community. Um, so I'm a teacher. Um, I actually, <laughs> I actually teach drama and science at Shinkuzi High School in Brampton. Yeah. Um, and six of my students are here tonight. Which is ridiculously cute because none of them drive. <laughs> and I, I gotta say right now, it's a super tough time to be a teacher. Um, I actually, uh, I had to take some time off in the fall to consider whether I really wanted to do this. Um, because I put so much into my work and we were going through so much. And while I was off, I figured out a couple of things and I just wanted to take a second and share them with you. And one is that music is so healing. Um, yeah. Yes. Actually, the first time I performed since my first daughter was born in 2014. Um, so it, it's really, I'm really feeling like this is a great space for us to come together and sort of heal from, from what's been happening. The other thing I wanted to share was that I, I realized there's nothing more hopeful than the young people of today. Yeah. Every day uh, when I read the news or God help me, I go on Twitter, I get to spend my day um, I at least get to spend my day with young people and they look at everything through such hopeful eyes and they give me, you know, they have such long memories. And they are going to grow up into the kind of adults that will see the planet they have been left with and will do better. Um, and they are already doing better. And Matt's Woo! given me the opportunity tonight uh, to introduce one of those young people to you. Um, so this is, I'd like to introduce Sarah Walker. So Sarah is a former student of mine, and she is actually a teacher candidate at the University of Nipissing, and she's down here, that's correct, right? Yeah. And she's down here on her reading week. Um, Sarah identifies as autistic, and during the four years that we worked together at Chinkuzi, she really opened my mind to what it means to be autistic and what that can be like. Um, in 2018, Sarah wrote a monologue about uh, her experiences with autism. And it was so brilliant that it inspired me and my other student, Kieran, who's the kid jingling the money box. <laughs> Good job, Kieran. Um, to write a show with a whole gang of neurotypical and neurodivergent teens called the Neurodiversity Project. And um, we entered it in what is now the National Theatre School Drama Festival, but it used to be Sears. Do you guys remember Sears? Yeah. Yeah. And she's really opened my eyes to what the possibilities of theater can be when you work with students who are not your typical, like, Randolph types. Um, I love you guys. I'm moving on. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Walker. From the time I was born, I was told that there must be something wrong with me. I was told that I was sick, but not in an easily explained flu kind of way. Imagine that, being one, two, three, four, five, and on. So young, so impressionable, to be burned with the shame of centuries of the past. Shame that wasn't mine to feel. And when I went on to start school, it got worse. I was different, and everyone could tell. But how could I hide who I was when I saw the world in a way that no one else that I knew did? Felt like I was invisible, yet so obvious. My world was neon bright, sharp, and sparkling with a million different things to look at. Noises that no one else cared about had me running from the rooms, hands clamped over my ears. And taste was the hardest of all. I was the bane of my mother. She could not find something 
to eat that I can tolerate. <laughs> Soft, chunky, sour, sweet, an explosion of flavors that made me gag. No wonder I had a hard time focusing with the explosion of senses I felt. No wonder I screamed when the class yelled. I was taught that I was wrong. They gave me coping mechanisms, and then they took them away. I was improved. I was told to knock it off. You say that you oppose neurodiversity, as if somehow the billions of unique personalities in this planet are housed in our ankles and elbows, not in our minds. Our brains flash at different intervals, playing with different electricity. Who are you to say that your wiring is superior to mine? And I would have spent the rest of my life believing that had it not come across the actually autistic hashtag. Here were autistic people not hiding, comfortable standing out. My views were prioritized over caregivers. I finally could understand. I was valid. There is a reason you slap. There is a reason you scream. There is a reason for each of the ways you are. And it's okay. I am different and unique. That's what makes me who I am.
Yeah.